Welcome to the Leftover Culture Review and welcome to the super spooky month of October. Today we are looking at the Master of Horror's very own video game, Stephen King's F13. This is a complete package of spooky horror horrible content. This is a big box with Stephen King plastered all over it. Normally when it comes around to October, when it comes to Halloween, I'm talking about party games. I'm bringing out stuff that you can play with your friends. Multiplayer horror action. So definitely check out a few of my older videos. But this year, I, I kind of realized that I don't go to Halloween parties myself. I just don't have enough friends to invite me out of the house. So I thought maybe I'd focus on a few games that you can play at home on your own and where better to start than, yeah, with a Stephen King game, F13. The So you guys might be asking yourself, why F13? What's that got to do with anything? And look, the back of the box, like the pitch for this whole game, really sums it up better than I think I ever could. So look, at the top of your seemingly benign keyboard lies a row of function keys, F1 to F12. There is no F13. Unless, of course, you're using a Mac. Macs do have F13. Um, which they mention in the pitch as well. I, I don't know why. But what if F13 with some real potency appeared? Something menacing, a merger of technology and terror brought straight to your desktop. Would you dare strike such a key? It is such a provocative question for computer users and horror fans alike that has been unanswered until now with this game. Uh, look, if an F13 key did appear and I was using a Windows or Microsoft keyboard, I probably wouldn't even notice. I don't know the last time I used the F function keys. So really the only way to get these sort of games running anymore, whether you're using Windows XP or Windows 98 or the classic Mac operating system, just mount the image, open up the CD tray and then perform the blood sacrifice ritual. Um, I mean, it's a bit old school, but it's the best way... <laughs> Oh, it's, it's really the best way to get some of these older games working anymore. So, um, enjoy. All right, I think we're ready to get into what's contained here on the package. We have the whole Stephen King horror collection to go through, but I wanted to save the good stuff till the very end. A bit of delayed satisfaction. Maybe we'll keep you watching this video. Who knows? Stranger things have happened, like Stephen King putting his name on this game. Like, it, there's not much Stephen King on the Stephen King game. I mean, Kiss Psycho Circus had a lot more to do with Kiss than I think this thing has to do with Stephen King. Um, let's start off with the screensavers, because when you put in a disc for the first time, when you put in Stephen King's video game, you really want to go check out what's happening with the screensavers. Uh, so it says here that the thumbnails have only been provided as a bit of a preview. You can't use the screensavers off this disc. You need to install them on your, uh, you know, operating system. But I thought we'd have a quick look at some of the pictures here. So yeah, to start off with, we get a little bit of crappy CGI um, that we can use potentially as screensavers on our very own computer. Like I said, this is the whole horror package. They didn't leave anything out, anything spooky that you can put onto your computer. Do you dare press the F13 key? Is this giving you shivers yet? All right, let's 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 move on. We might go check out the... So there's desktop backgrounds as well, which are like desktop backgrounds, as well as bumps and thumps. And that's a sound, like a collection of sound clips that you can use to replace your operating system sound files with. The problem you're going to have is listening to these sound files over the top of the music that has been so lovingly provided by the menu for F13. Oh, but the music stops eventually. Listen to the slicer. So 
So guys, I want to let you in on a little secret here. When I do my Goosebumps book recordings, when I read Goosebumps stories and I lay sounds underneath them, I grab a lot of those sounds off YouTube itself. I don't use sound collections like these anymore, but absolutely, it's all available here on Stephen King's F13. Uh, they're short. These sound effects are really short because they're made to replace the system sound effects. It would have been cool if they actually gave you like music that you could play with. Like an actual sound mixer. You can make your own Halloween tracks. You can layer in your own atmospheric sounds. But that may have been a little bit too much work for Stephen King's F13. Like they had to pack a lot on this disc, right? They couldn't just come up with cool stuff to put on the disc when they've got you know, the whole Stephen King, everything's eventual mini story, as well as three dedicated video games that they made just for Stephen King's F13. But who is they? Who actually created Stephen King's F13? Stay tuned, everything will be revealed. Popping into death top backgrounds, we get a collection of backgrounds we can use on our own computer. Again, just like all the other ones, these are just previews, right? You need to actually go into the disc and set them yourself manually, find them, you know, you know the whole deal. And here in desktop images, we get more images just like the screensaver. It feels like bad CGI work that people just couldn't sell anywhere else. Like they couldn't sell it to a stock asset library. So they clumped it on this disc, slapped on Stephen King's name and put on one of Stephen King's short stories. So there's not really much to say about the desktop backgrounds. They, they're incredibly lazy. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you think of when you think of Stephen King, but a lot of this material has been recycled, like still shots from the games contained on the disc or still shots from the screensavers. Man, this is getting bad. Look, let's, let's check out the games. I think you guys have earned it. We're gonna have a look at one of the first games on the disc. There's three different games contained right here on this one disc. So much bang for your buck. And all of them is filled to the brim with spooky, scary um, settings and scenarios. We have No Swimming, Bug Splat, as well as Whack a Zombie. That's very obviously a skeleton, but who's arguing at this point, right? So I say we start at the top with No Swimming. This is like Feed the fish, there's a help option and also quit and then you can choose whether to have high quality or I guess not high quality. <laughs> uh, this is like a virtual fish tank and it's our job to keep the fish happy. There's five different animals that we get to feed the piranhas with and we get to watch the animals slowly drift to the bottom of the screen and get absolutely massacred by these piranhas. So there really is no game element here. The piranha, you don't need to have the animals touch the piranhas. The piranhas will sense the animal that you've dropped in the tank and immediately go and devour them. So it doesn't matter where you drop the animals, how many animals you drop, you can only really drop one at a time. The only hint I can give you guys is when you select your animal, make sure you drag them to the very top of the tank to release them into the water. Holy cow, man. This is the most depressing Halloween I've ever had to spend on my own. I also love how tiny some of the animals get when you drop them into the water. Like, like these are piranhas, right? They're a type of fish. They shouldn't, they shouldn't be bigger than the cow or the rhinoceros. So look, that is Feed the Fish. Obviously quit is gonna be the option that everyone wants after spending not even a whole minute in that game. Uh, Bug Splat is kinda where my interest picked up a little bit. I'm gonna show you Bug Splat, then we're gonna have a look at everything's eventual, and then we'll come back to the final game here on this disc, Whack a Zombie with Skeletons. Bug Splat, now I love as much as I don't like some of those graphics and CGI images, I really love how what they're doing here with Bug Splat. I love that gross, gooey look. I would have loved to see a lot more of it in this game. Again, we have new game, high score, help, quit. We also have the option to turn off highest quality. Again, if we want to play in anything less than high quality. 
Round one, let's do it. This actually has rounds in it, which is quite surprising. <laughs> this is already so much better than Feed the Fish, which definitely isn't saying much, but it exists and who doesn't like squashing a few bugs? And look, if you guys want to play a game where you get to squash bugs and it is actually fun, I totally recommend checking out the Sega Menacer review I did. There is a six in one pack in cartridge, which actually has a similar game where you need to shoot bugs off a of pizza. Now that was a cool idea because you get the Menacer light gun, which is pizza. Pest control. Basically, you take your deadly looking menacer and you use it like a bit of a flashlight to find the cockroaches, which you go ahead to shoot and explode. The further you get into the game, the quicker the cockroach is gonna get. You're gonna go up again, different types of bugs, all after that last piece of pizza. As far as a game concept goes, I'm not exactly sure who's gonna eat that pizza after the first cockroach has taken a bite, but you are fighting to save that thing down to the very last scrap. So it says here, Chris got 10,000 points. Massive, massive congratulations to Chris. Um, it's not me. <laughs> I don't think I could last till 10,000. That is an insane number. So bug splat, definitely the best thing so far on this disc, but I'm gonna quickly go over and check out everything's eventual Stephen King's short story. Now, at the time that this game came out, Everything's Eventual wasn't released in book format. It was released in some journal or some magazine publication. This was how you could read Stephen King's Everything's Eventual at home on your computer. It gives us a book, a book to read on our computer. We can bookmark our book, we can turn the music on and off and we can flip the pages. I guess as far as this game disc is concerned, this thing is pretty much given the most love on the whole disc. They also give you a couple of images to help move the story along. The power of putting your book on a computer is that you can put images in your book. Um, how very fantastic and clever. Everyone can enjoy Everything's Eventual on Stephen King's F13. This is what happens if your computer has an F13 button and you dare to press it. It's a shame that they didn't actually do something cool with the F13 button on a Mac, like if they made it a shortcut to actually do something cool. That would have been, that would have been probably too clever for this game. So Everything's Eventual is, it definitely is a story by Stephen King and it's about mind control and you can definitely check out the whole blurb, check it out for yourself. Um, or just check out Wikipedia and get like the plot summary. It's about a kid who can essentially kill people by sending them patterns and he's being used and exploited by people and he slowly starts to realize it and get his revenge. It's not your traditional horror story, but um, it is a Stephen King story and he is the master of horror. So I guess by proxy, it's a horror story too. And you get to enjoy it here on Stephen King's F13, the reason to buy this disc. Um, which I, I seriously can't recommend after seeing what we've seen here to actually go out and buy F13. This, this has felt like a really long review. I'm so, I'm so grateful for all of you guys who have stuck through this with me. This is like one of my first times experiencing everything this disc has to offer in one go. I definitely tried to save the best till last. I saved the last game available here on this disc. <sighs> Whack a zombie. Let's get into Whack a Zombie and see how we do. So I know there was pictures of skeletons all over this game. If you play for long enough, you actually get to whack a few zombies as well. <sighs> look, it, it's a very simple whack-a-mole game. The graphics look okay, but they don't change. They don't move. You don't get different sets. You don't get different scenarios. You go up against two different enemies and hit them with your CGI shovel to get a high score. Look, um, if you are alone for Halloween, give me a call because I think no one should have to be alone and play and play this game or look forward to playing this game. Just set, reach out to me guys. <laughs> you don't have to be this lonely on Halloween. So guys, I, I don't know how to explain how disappointed I am in Stephen King's F13. It's a game that caught my eye because I remember 
these activity center style games being such a big deal for me as a kid. I had the South Park one where you had different sound effects and you got to change your background and your mouse cursors. They felt like a lot of fun. There was like Christmas themed ones that you could put in around Christmas time. Stephen King F13, I was really hoping that it would give me that experience for Halloween, but it just falls short in so, in just so many ways. There's just nothing here that is really that good. And this thing got like a big box commercial release. It, it really blows me away. Um, the developers of Presto Software, they actually developed Myst 3 as well as like a Stargate game for the computer. They had a bit of clout as developers. They kind of knew what they were doing. And yet, this is the sort of stuff that they were being asked to develop for money. Uh, I guess some some people bought it. I've downloaded this version, I've mounted it. You can definitely do the same to check it out for yourselves. I just really hope that your Halloween is better. You guys deserve so much better than this. If you're alone on Halloween and this is the only thing you've got to play, then definitely hit me up and I'll find you something so much better. There are so many cool horror games that I've reviewed right here on the Leftover Culture Review, including games like Zombie Revenge, which is still one of my favorite Dreamcast games. There are so many awesome games on the Saturn. There are so many awesome games on the PlayStation 2. You definitely do not need to be stuck with Stephen King's F13. And I think you know that. We're talking about authors, talking about books, talking about scary stories. Over on the Leftovers channel, I have been reading like Goosebumps books from the short story collection of Goosebumps and trying to, yeah, create little like audio books out of them. And I thought it was a really fun idea. I definitely love if you were interested, if you wanted to go check it out over on the Leftovers channel, I have a description down below for you to look at. Thank you so much for tuning in and being here and sharing your time with me. It really does mean a lot, even if we're looking at something like Stephen King's F13. I'm glad we could do it together because I definitely did not want to do this alone. But I was really curious about what it was all about. So, until next time, guys, thank you so much and stay tuned for more Leftover Culture. Cheers.